What's going on guys, Arrow here and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the potential leak of a March 2020 Nintendo Direct. And so yeah, you guys know the drill, here we are once again making a video about a potential Nintendo Direct. I know, I know, we've been doing this for like the past 3 months, but it's gotta happen eventually, right? Like there's really no reason why a Direct isn't coming up. Like after Animal Crossing releases in just 9 days, we honestly don't know what else Nintendo has planned in terms of first party games for this year. So there has to be a Nintendo Direct coming up, and there's actually a really big reason as to why there's probably gonna be a Direct this month as well. So if you guys didn't know, the end of March this month is gonna be the end of Nintendo's physical year which is basically like their business cycle that they have for all their sales and stuff that they've had and so after that ends this month they're essentially going to start a brand new fiscal year and that means there's going to be new stuff for them to sell and new products that are going to be coming out but the thing is we actually don't know what else is coming after so they have to have some type of a direct or some type of big announcements on the way because they have to talk about what those new things are going to be in the next fiscal year. And so with all of the upcoming meetings that Nintendo's probably going to have with all of their investors, they're obviously not going to show up and say that we don't have anything else besides Sword and Shield DLC and Smash Bros DLC. There's got to be some new games that they're going to talk about and say like these games are going to do really well and try to make sure that the investors are still trusted in Nintendo. So that's why it's like extremely likely that we're probably going to get a Nintendo Direct by the end of March. And so here we are on the website with the rumor. This rumor actually comes from VentureBeat. And so it says here in the article, a March 2020 Nintendo Direct is in the works with a focus on the 2020 lineup. The next Nintendo Direct is in the works. The publisher hasn't confirmed the event yet, but it's in the final stages of putting the video presentation together. That's based on what we're hearing as well as some other indicators. Expect a Nintendo Direct soon. The company is penciling one of its indie showcases for next week, likely March 18th. A full general direct will follow soon after, likely March 26th. Unlike the last two directs which focused on specific games, Pokemon and Animal Crossing New Horizons, the next direct will take a broader look at the Nintendo Switch's upcoming lineup. Nintendo's first party slate is the subject of many rumors, and I can't confirm what it will show off, but expect the company to continue relying heavily on remasters and ports. But Nintendo will also bring in support from third party publishers and developers. So expect to hear about a wide variety of games that you can pick up for Nintendo's hybrid home handheld Switch console through the summer and beyond. I reached out to Nintendo, but it declined to comment. I mean, obviously, I don't know why this guy decided to do that. Like, obviously, if you ask Nintendo, is there a Direct coming soon? They're not going to respond, but... Okay, um, he also says here, what is the proof that there is going to be a Direct happening next week? The publisher hasn't announced the Direct yet, so things could change. And yes, this is absolutely me hedging, but Nintendo is deep into the process of putting the event together based on what I've heard. It has decided many of the third party games it will include in the event, so it's definitely happening, and almost certainly before the end of March. The company also updated the Nintendo playlist on its Japanese YouTube account, which I talked about in a previous video. The last time it did that was a week before the Animal Crossing Direct. I wouldn't normally read too much into that pattern. Nintendo doesn't behave in a consistent manner that is easy to predict, but this is some circumstantial evidence that lines up with everything else. Finally, Nintendo needs to communicate its lineup, and not even to its fans. The publisher is coming at the end of its fiscal year on March 31st, and investors will want to know how Nintendo plans to keep generating revenue. It could do that with a conference call with analysts and its shareholders, but it's more likely that Nintendo will actually present its lineup to its fans first at this point. The last general Nintendo Direct was in September, and fans know almost nothing about what is coming to the Switch beyond Animal Crossing. A Direct would enable Nintendo to carry some momentum into its fiscal year's end, it could then also point to the Direct as evidence for future revenue during a shareholders meeting in the spring. If this Direct pans out, we should hear something about it as early as next week. And then they also updated this article saying that clarified that the indie world is likely happening on March 18th and that a Nintendo Direct will happen on March 26th. And so if you guys want my thoughts on this article, basically what they're saying is that we're probably going to be getting an indie presentation that showcases some indie games that's going to be happening next week. And then the following week on March 26th, there's apparently going to be a Nintendo Direct, a full general normal Nintendo Direct that's going to showcase a lot of their upcoming games for the Nintendo Switch in 2020. Now whether or not these dates actually do end up being true and we do get an indie showcase on March 18th and a full-fledged normal Nintendo Direct on March 26th, the fact of the matter is like the person said in the article, the Nintendo fiscal year is going to be ending at the end of the month and so they obviously have to show some new games that are going to be coming after Animal Crossing so that the investors and shareholders can know how Nintendo is still going to be generating money. 
And to be honest, this all does line up pretty perfectly because next week is going to be when Animal Crossing New Horizons comes out. And the thing is, if they had a normal Nintendo Direct next week, it really wouldn't make a lot of sense for them to show like a whole bunch of big games that are going to be coming to the Switch and then have Animal Crossing come out that Friday after. But if they do an indie showcase next week, those are just some games that really aren't that expensive. So they could really get away with just showing some indie games that are going to be coming to the Switch and then still have a big AAA Animal Crossing release on the Friday. And then the week after, once Animal Crossing has already released and people have bought it, that's when they can talk about all the other games that are coming after in a normal Nintendo Direct, so I definitely do think that it would make a ton of sense. Now there was actually a really interesting theory about this that somebody from my Discord brought to my attention, which is that maybe Nintendo themselves are actually going to be having an indie showcase that's going to happen on the 18th, and there is a full-fledged Nintendo Direct on the 26th, but maybe they themselves actually started this whole rumor and made sure that people knew about it. Now you might be thinking, what well, era? why would they do that? Why would they leak their own surprise? But the thing is, if you guys didn't know, a lot of the Nintendo community right now just wants a normal Nintendo Direct. Pretty much every single tweet that Nintendo puts out right now, all of the replies are just, where's the Nintendo Direct? Give us a Nintendo Direct. Nintendo Direct soon, please give us a Direct. Like, everybody just really wants a Nintendo Direct. And obviously Nintendo has to be aware of how many people keep asking for a Direct. So the thing is, if next week, if we didn't actually know about this rumor, and next week all of a sudden they announce a Nindie showcase or like an indie showcase for all the indie games, can you imagine the outrage that we would have from so many people who've been asking for a Nintendo Direct for months and then we get an indie's presentation instead? So that's why a lot of people think that maybe Nintendo themselves just created this rumor because now if we know that there's going to be an indie showcase and then there's going to be a full-fledged normal Direct after, then next week if we do get an indie showcase, people actually won't be angry about it because then they'll be like oh this adds more credibility to the fact that we might actually be getting a normal Nintendo Direct the week after. Now for the second part of this video I do want to talk to you guys about the unfortunate news that E3 2020 has been cancelled for this year and so I'm on the official E3 Twitter account right now and this is their latest tweet it's already pinned and so you guys can see right here it says the E3 team is devastated to share this news this decision was not reached lightly but it is the right one for the health and safety of all involved read our statement here. After careful consultation with our member companies regarding the health and safety of everyone in our industry, our fans, our employees, our exhibitors, and our longtime E3 partners, we have made the difficult decision to cancel E3 2020, scheduled for June 9th to 11th in Los Angeles. And so yeah, E3 2020 has been officially cancelled. The reasoning that they gave for this was because of the coronavirus, which definitely makes a ton of sense. It is a very serious situation, and of course you wouldn't want to risk having hundreds of people from all over the world gathered in this one big event and potentially having the risk of having the virus spread to many people, so I can totally see where they're coming from. And so I'm definitely not like angry or pissed off that E3 isn't going to be happening this year, but June is definitely going to feel very different this year, the fact that E3 is not going to be happening. I think somebody even said like this is like the first time in over 20 years that we're not going to have an E3. They've pretty much always had an E3 every single year since it began in like 1995. So it's just crazy that this is going to be the first ever year where we're just not going to have an E3. And the really sad part is that last year's E3 could end up being the final E3. If you guys didn't know, E3 kind of just hasn't been doing all that well for the past couple of years. I mean, really one of the big parts about that was that PlayStation kind of just has been skipping E3 for the past few years. They haven't shown up to the one last year. I don't think that they were going to show up again this year either. So a lot of people just didn't feel the need to even go to E3 anymore because one of the biggest companies, PlayStation, wasn't even going to be there. And just in general, E3 kind of just hasn't really been doing all that well. I know that even like a couple years ago, they opened it up to the public so that anybody could go to E3 and they were doing that to try to get some more money out of people to try to make sure that E3 could still survive. Like in the past, E3 used to be an exclusive event only for the media and just some influencers and YouTubers and stuff. Like it was very exclusive, but now they try to open it up to everyone so that you could still come. And I just know a lot of people were talking about how some people just think that E3 really isn't worth it. I mean, you have to buy your own plane tickets to go there. You have to rent your own hotels and stuff and then at the same time like a lot of people just don't even get to play all the games that are available there you really have to just stand in line for like three hours to even get a chance to get to a game and then even when you get to it you only get to play for like five or ten minutes so a lot of people just don't see e3 as really being like a big hype presentation that it kind of used to be in the past now I do know that there were potential rumors about like a digital E3 being in the works. We don't know exactly if that's going to happen or not, but I think it would make sense to still have some type of E3, but just have it digitally. But it's definitely going to be really sad if we just don't have anything. That second week of June where E3 always happens, it's essentially become like a holiday for all video game fans, for any company really, to just look forward to and have really awesome announcements and stuff. And it's just going to feel so different this year if we actually don't get anything. 
and really going off of that whole digital E3 idea, I think that that would be really cool for them to do because the thing is, if any company really has any announcements and things that they want to share, they could honestly just have a stream where they show off all that type of stuff and I can guarantee you all their fans would still tune in, whether it's Bethesda or Square Enix, EA, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, like they could all do that and there's obviously still going to be thousands of people still tuning in to watch. And so the whole idea of a digital E3 could actually be really cool because in that sense you wouldn't have to have like the stalling and the filler stuff that usually happens on stages. If you guys ever watch like the full actual press conferences that happen for all the companies at E3, you guys know a lot of those just happen to be like filler with one guy on the stage on the microphone talking for a lot about random stuff and then they finally go into some game announcements. But if every company really just had their own Nintendo Direct style type of presentation where it's short and to the point and only full of the announcements and the good stuff, I think that that could really work out well and that could be a whole new era for E3 where we just have this one week where everybody tunes in and there's different streams from all of the companies. And so a digital E3 could in fact be the future of how E3 is going to work. I know that there were some people saying on Twitter that like 2020 is just that one-off year but next year we'll be back for E3 2021. I don't know I really wouldn't count on that like a lot of companies just don't really feel like E3 is all that important anymore because of how much money that they have to spend for the stages and the boots and everything and that's why a lot of people just don't feel like E3 is really all that necessary a lot of people really don't even go to E3 that much anymore and so maybe that's why it could be better if you could just all watch E3 from the comfort of our homes and everything just becomes digital the only sad part is just the whole experience of going to E3 and having all those fans there and all those people excited is just not really gonna ever happen again potentially but I really want E3 to still be alive I really want to go there myself one day like that's one of my biggest dreams and if it just becomes a digital type of stream event then it's gonna be really sad because one of my biggest like goals is just to experience E3 once like just to go there and meet some people and experience E3 like that would be so much fun and it's really gonna be a shame if it actually ends here and I'll never get to experience that. And so there you go guys, that is the rumor that we have for a March 2020 Nintendo Direct, as well as the unfortunate cancellation of E3 this year. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please be sure to click that like button, and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think of all this. Do you guys think that the March Direct is going to be happening? Do you think that the Indie Showcase will also happen? Definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. And also let me know what you guys think about the cancellation of E3, and how you guys think that E3 is going to be in the future as well. I'm always curious to see what you guys have to say. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Nintendo content in the future, so please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at actual arrow so you can be featured in videos and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo so definitely be sure to join that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.